What's up? It's Brian Sosha, of course, at T-H-E-B-R-I-A-N-S-O-S-C-I-A on Twitter. You know, I love to talk wrestling with you, so just hit me up. Speaking of talking wrestling, another WWE exclusive. Today, we're getting beneath the mat with a guy who's calling to let us know that SmackDown is now moving to Thursdays. A guy who's been there for, I think, like every SmackDown. He's had a nice career, too. None other than the big show from WWE. What's up, bro? How you feeling, man? Hey, Brian. I'm good, man. I've been there since the beginning. I was there in 99, and I was there when they were talking about the... Uh bringing the show on board, and I remember them saying they were going to name it SmackDown. I remember a bunch of us walking around going, why are they naming the show after one of the Rock deals? Yeah, right. But the- obviously, Vince, Vince was smart enough to see the future, and uh, knew that SmackDown was probably a good name for it. I guess SmackDown's made the dictionary now, so there you go. That's what they say, yeah, and I'll tell you, as a quick aside, because we have a lot to get to about you today, i got to tell you, a lot of people don't realize this, I don't share quite often. I did tweet it out today and all, but uh, SmackDown years ago, 2000 maybe five or six in Philly, I actually got beat yeah. up by you. You choke slammed me through a big flower pot during a celebration of excellence after you so called cheated uh, JBL out of his title at the barbed wire cage match. Uh, no way out. So <laughs> you, know, you tried to mess up the celebration. I tried to stop it, and I'll never get in your way again. I'll tell you that. <laughs> well, thank you for taking that bump. I appreciate it. <laughs> you got it, man. <laughs> my pleasure. I think I had your handprint on my chest there for a while, though. Yeah, if I chopped you, you probably had that. Yeah, that's. <laughs> Which That's is one of the uh, unique side effects to that great crowd reaction. Is a guy taking the chop walks around with a handprint like he's been bugged by for life. <laughs> yeah, right. It's, it's a huge handprint. That's what I want to get at with your size, the incredible size that you have. I just I feel like wrestling is one of the careers that you would almost not have to choose, but it makes sense to choose. So, as a kid growing up, honestly, were you a fan of wrestling, and how did you decide to finally get into it? I was a huge fan growing up. Now, I grew up in the South, in South Carolina, so I was influenced real heavily by the Four Horsemen, Arn Anderson, Tommy Wildfire Rich, Ronnie Darvin, um, you know, Bob Armstrong, Brad Armstrong. I mean, you know, that that kind of wrestling was just ingrained in our culture growing up in South Carolina, and, and it was one of the only sports as a kid that my father and I would watch together, because my dad wasn't a really big sports nut. I mean, I was a great basketball player in high school, and and I was trying to explain to my dad that I was going to go to college and, you know, college was going to be free because I was getting a scholarship. And my old man was telling me, well, you shouldn't be playing you know, basketball. You should go to tech school and learn how to weld. If you learn how to weld, you'll always have a job and always be able to put food on the table. I just don't think he understood the, the opportunities that were available to me because I was an athlete. And uh, um, as things develop, things have a way of working out in life. You keep, you know, you, you're not afraid to knock on doors and create opportunities. Um, I got a chance to to do something that I loved as a kid and and never really had an inclination I really would be any good at it. I mean, you know, let's face it. When you're starting out in this industry, you don't look at yourself and say, hey, I'm going to be able to compete with Hulk Hogan or I'm going to be able to compete with with Randy Savage or Ric Flair. That's not something that you really think about, at least in my psyche anyway. I always thought it would be a cool thing to do and maybe I'll try it and see if I can do well at it, but... I never could have fathomed that I was going to be able to, to manifest the career that I have. And honestly, i got to be thankful every day. I'm still able to wake up and compete five nights a week, and, and, and I'm still here. Hey, you got it. You've had a great career, and and I'm glad that you, with your size, your agility, which I don't think you get enough credit for. You do get some, but your agility is top notch. And, and I think that, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but where you started would have been with the power plant, right? WCW, and if that yeah, is- I did. I was actually, you know, it's funny. I always tell this story, and Hunter gets mad at me, but one of the two guys that really trained me when I first started and uh, worked with me a lot was uh, Triple H and Terry Taylor. And uh, I always tease Hunter and say, you know, yeah, I tell everybody you train me how to wrestle. And Hunter's like, don't put that heat on me. Don't tell anybody <laughs> that I trained you. I don't want that heat. You know what I mean? Basically saying that I'm terrible and he doesn't want anybody to know that he trained me. Wow. So, uh, <laughs> well, 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 I got to argue but, there because uh, I'm sorry to cut you off. But this is, I said, I, I'm sorry to cut you off, but I have to argue with him a little bit about being terrible because this was leading to my next question. You just put it out there perfectly. Now, I had heard, I've never seen this, but I would heard, I guess, in the power plant or wherever you were training, that maybe you had done a moonsault in your younger days before. Is this true, and can you actually do one? Uh, I could do one back in 95. I did uh, I did one in the power plant. I did somewhere in the show somewhere. I think I did somewhere. I think I did one in Japan. And the our business was different back then. Um, it was still somewhat kayfabe. Mm-hmm. Um, the amount of whiplash and... Um, condemnation that came down on me from the older senior veteran guys. It was absolutely ridiculous for me to even 
think about doing a maneuver like that. And if I can do that, you know, it destroys the validity of the business mm-hmm. and uh, you know, and your knees to too. In the locker room and stuff like that. When you're a young guy, you kind of do what everybody tells you to do. And they were right in the aspect of sure. Is it a spectacle to see? Can I still get on the top rope and throw a drop kick off the top rope? Absolutely. Can I drop elbows off the top rope? Absolutely. But in the real spectrum of, of our business and the storytelling that we're doing, doesn't really make sense. I mean, you know, in certain events and certain matches, I think I dropped an elbow on Mark Henry at, at one of the pay-per-views that we had a couple of years ago. I went to the top rope and dropped an elbow on him um, for a false finish off the top rope. But that was a situation where there was another guy that was a big powerhouse guy that I needed to go to the go to the well, so to speak. You know, if I go to the well every night, eventually the well is going to be dry. So you try to save stuff like that for your body and for the matches where it's deemed necessary. You know, the the whole thing that I'm doing now with, you know, my character, my career is, is, you know, trying to help develop these younger guys, let them find out who they are, be a good opponent for them, try to be a mountain for them to climb, uh, help them along the way. And, you know, it's not really a bad place for me. I've done a lot of great things in this business. I've got nothing to be upset or bitter about. Sure, I've been heel. Sure, I've been baby-faced, um, you know, but I'm still able to go out there and get the fans emotionally invested. Sure, a lot of people hate me right now. I'm a heel. Well, that's kind of my job. There's no, there's, you know, I'm not one of those kind of heels that's going to go out there and be a supposed bad guy that you know is cool and people end up liking you because you never have any heat there. When I'm a bad guy, I want everybody to absolutely hate me. That's my job. And that's so the that's the smart thing. That's, yeah, I agree. That's the smart thing to do. Many guys don't understand that, I don't think, anymore. Like you said, how the industry's changed a little bit. But I understand the fact that you know you need to evolve with characters, and everyone's done it from The Undertaker that's been successful. And you've evolved definitely since you first started. And I think one of the things that may have been, I don't know if it's helpful, you tell me, or tricky for you, is the fact that, you know, I don't mean to step on the terms and use, but you're using them, so I'll use them. You have been a heel, you've been a face. I, I think I read something online about some record with the turns. Does that make it harder for you, or do you enjoy the challenge? No, I enjoy the challenge. Here's the thing. You know, I'm able to do those turns, and I'm able to make the character convincing. I mean, sure, you know, you're going to catch a lot of backlash. Oh, there's so many heels, so many face turns, and blah, 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 and I need to retire. And I've heard that, but the whole thing is it makes me laugh, because when people are saying that, that it they really don't know what they're talking about. If you look at what I'm doing as a heel, I'm giving you a character that can work, that can develop a younger talent and bring the best out of that younger talent by helping them to grow in ring in their psychology. Sure, do I do a lot of fancy moves like, like other guys? No, but that's not my job. I'm not supposed to do that. My job is to be the big bully, mean guy that you know that is a pounder, that's a brawler, that eventually the good guy wins. You know, that's my job is to help give that opponent, the good guy, the face, a mountain to climb. If you don't have any heels that you really hate, you don't have any good guys that you can get behind. You know, so I think people need to develop a little bit of patience and understand that, you know, that you know, the rock wasn't made overnight. You know, when the rock started is Rocky Maivia, he had to go through changes and go through developments and then he got to put his own persona and develop who he is. There's a lot of guys coming up now that I see so much potential in. You know, Seth Rollins in this past year has done absolutely fantastic in the role that he's stepped in. He's an amazing in ring talent, great on a microphone, a great heel. Um, you look at Bray Wyatt with, with his style, he's a little bit unconventional, a little bit more old school. He's not that CrossFit body type, but he's extremely explosive, um, very intricate, great promo skills. He's a completely different character. He's developed his own brand. Dean Ambrose has that crazy, psychotic, little bit of a, you don't know if he's mentally all there. He's kind of a wild cannon, good-looking guy, but at the same time, he doesn't quite look like he's all there mentally, which is a great character that he's built. You know, Roman Reigns has come to his own, you know, and Roman is, is really coming along. He had that serious, you know, you know, surgery a few months back. You know, it was pretty life-threatening. You know, that kind of hernia is very dangerous. Mm-hmm. You know, he was able to come through all that, and now he's starting to come into his own. I'm looking for really big things from Roman for this year. Um, I've got to get excited about a lot of things going on. Probably. SmackDown's coming uh, back to Thursday nights. Yeah. Um, so we're excited about that. Yeah, I'm very Royal excited. Royal Rumble's going to be right there. Royal Rumble's going to be right there in Philadelphia. Oh, 25th. it's, it's going to be we awesome. We all know that Royal Rumble's uh, 
you know, the start of the playoffs, so to speak, for WrestleMania. You see how Royal Rumble goes, and that leads into who's going to be the players at WrestleMania. You so, got it. And we get it here yeah. in Philadelphia. Very excited about uh, SmackDown moving to Thursday nights, too. And uh, what you just said there about uh, the former Shield, I think it was almost divine intervention. It sucks, but Roman got hurt, and the other two guys are stepping up. It's good to see. So hopefully they all come out of this smelling like roses. I mean, it's going to be it's going to be tough for Roman, I'm telling you, because there's a lot of pressure on Roman, because he's got, with, with a lot of potential, comes a lot of pressure. I mean, you know, I mean, Roman's got the look. He's got the athletic agility, you know. But Roman's got to really step up the plate. And with his dedication and drive, uh, I'm I'm sure just starting to see the cusp of the superstar that Roman's going to turn into. I got a lot of high hopes for him, and and I'm really thankful and fortunate that I get to feud with him now, uh, early in his career, and uh, you know, hopefully be that guy that uh, that helps get him on the way. I think it's definitely going to happen. I think we were excited because we all get to watch where it's going to lead from here. Again, SmackDown, come back to Philly and show two quick one-word answers before I let you go because I know we're running short on time. Uh, One being, we're here in Philadelphia, which was, of course, you know, us Philadelphians cling on to it, the birthplace of ECW. Now, you actually got the chance to perform in the ECW arena when WWE uh, was doing the ECW thing, and I was there, and I felt bad for you. I mean, the fans of Philly... They weren't in love with you. I mean, I know you're a performer and you're That's looking for fair. reaction, but how did that feel working at the ECW Arena with everyone just all over you? I, I'm okay. You know, here's the thing. I don't ever – my character sells stuff on TV. My whole thing is, is I get an emotional response. You know what I mean? If they take the time, the worst thing that can happen is when nobody says anything. You know what I mean? That's the worst thing that can happen. The best thing that can happen, yeah, they tell me I suck, they hate me, they boo, they chant. You know what? They're having fun. Even if they're chanting boring, they're still chanting. They're having fun. They came to the show. They bought a ticket to have fun. You can't. I don't take anything I do as a character personally whatsoever. I know the respect I have from the guys in the locker room. I know the respect I have from the people I work for. I know the things that I've done in my career that, I, that I've accomplished. Um, you know, sometimes you're going to go into, you're not going to, they're not going to like you. That's just, you know, it's, that's the way the cookie crumbles. Not everybody is liked in every town. It doesn't work that way. Yeah, you so, have to, I guess yeah. you have to learn to deal with that. And, uh, yeah, of again, course you do. Course. I mean, thing. I mean, my God, you, you're wearing spandex for a living. It's not like, you know, you're the you're an ambassador <laughs> representing world peace. I mean, you know, you wear spandex. You can't take things personal. At the end of the day, yeah, I guess this is a good way of looking at it. Last question before I let you go. I seem to remember, it's like a blur because I've just watched so much over my lifetime wrestling, but it might be in WCW. You were coming out to the ring at the time. Uh, you were like smoking a cigarette or something. So Yeah, yeah, how- yeah, yeah. Yeah, that was that was uh, one of those things in my career. I wish, you know, I, it was kind of an asinine thing to do. Um I used to smoke. I don't smoke anymore. Good, um, good. And like I said, our business was different then. It was the attitude era. It was rock and roll. Yep. Our target viewer audience was 18 to 35 back then. Yeah. There wasn't as many kids watching as there is now. Okay. Um, that was one of those things where I was in the back and, and I walked out with it. <laughs> if you remember, I didn't have ring music back then because I was a giant. He doesn't need <laughs> ring music. That was the brilliant guys in WCW that thought I was unique because I didn't have <laughs> ring music. And I remember I was with a heated discussion with someone before. And they said, oh, you're up next. And uh, I just walked out, and I had it. So, you know, as many things, you just make it work. Yeah. You know what I mean? Was it a smart thing? Absolutely. Uh, was it one of those kind of things that this guy, you kind of look like a tool for doing that? Eh. You know, you live and you learn. Hey, yeah. You know what? Uh, everybody makes mistakes along the way. So uh, I agree. the main thing is, is I'm glad that I quit smoking, and my health was a lot better for it. That's where I was going with. It. I was going to ask you if you do smoke in uh, real life and if you quit. So that's a good thing to know. And uh, no, you know, I actually, my my last cigarette was in 2007. Oh, so, very good. Uh, I smoked. I had smoked for 15 years before that and quit smoking. And I think uh, as an athlete and as a performer, I'm a lot better off um, since I quit smoking. I've lost a lot of weight since then, and uh, uh, done a lot of things to to prolong my career and take out, made a lot of investments in myself and. And uh, getting back in the gym and stretching and biking and, you know, not so many late night trips to McDonald's, a lot more salads and a lot more chicken. So uh, uh, I'm here for the long haul. Good, good. We want to see you around for a long time. So we're not looking at retirement anytime soon, hopefully. Right, Joe? Not a chance. No, good. I've got three years left on this contract, so I'll be around for three years at a full-time schedule, you know, without a doubt. You know? All right. After that, you know, we'll see. We'll roll into a different role, a different capacity. Who knows? I haven't figured out what the next evolution is for me yet. 
Um, we'll see where I am at that point in, uh, of the of the business. I mean, let's face it, I've been doing this 20 years and five days a week. So there's a part of me that kind of wants to, you know, um, finish out this contract strong and then, you know, move on to having – uh, a little bit of a personal life, you know oh. what I mean, to do some things for me. Because, you know, when you travel as much as we do, um, though I love what I do and, I, and I'm thoroughly proud and honored to be out there with the fans, just a part of me now that's kind of sick of going through airports and kind of sick of sitting on flights. You know, it's like I'd like to find a job where I never leave home. Maybe I'll sit at home and become an author. Uh, you know, <laughs> there you go. I'll write, uh, I'll write my memoirs. You could do it. It looks, like, it looks like they're selling big nowadays, all the memoirs of the guys doing it. Well, look, I'm just happy we got through this whole interview without you choke slamming me again. So I appreciate that show. I guess we're friends now. Absolutely, my man. We are all set. Thank you <laughs> all very, right. very much. Thanks again for visiting with us and taking some extra time. I really appreciate the show. Listen, be safe, okay? Thank you very much. Have a great day. Thank you, too.